Hi everybody, absolutely delighted to have Nick Francis from Casual with me today and we're talking about future content trends. Um, in fact, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be splitting it into two episodes because there's plenty, me and Nick always have great chat when, when, we, when, we, when, we, um, when we, we get going. So we're going to be talking about, first of all, why it's important to focus on the future and the benefits that is um, there is for, for businesses to do that, even though the natural maybe, inclination is to maybe batten down, down the hatches. Also, we're going to be talking about the changes in com content production. And then the next episode, we're then going to be talking about specific trends and sharing some examples of those trends. So let's get on with the chat. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks, Chris. I'm just really good to be here. Um, and uh, we're doing a lot of thinking around some of these future trends. So it's great to be able to share these with you and with, with your audience. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm in London and uh, it's, uh, the night is upon us, but you're in uh, what part of the world? Is it San Francisco still? I, I'm in sunny but cold San Francisco. Yeah, uh, you may hear the noise off outside my office window. But uh, yeah, we've been over here for nearly five years now. And one of the thing, really interesting things I think about being based in the Bay Area is just how um, incredibly future focused and entrepreneurial everyone is. Uh, all the ideas people have are so, so uh, expansive and kind of global that you can't help but get kind of caught up in it. And it, it, I think when I was living in London, there was a real perception that the huge revolution in technology that was happening was something that was being done to us by a lot of people who were a long way away. Whereas sort of coming here and actually rubbing shoulders with all the people who are developing these products, you realize that, you know, they are just people, they don't have all the answers. Um, and so it's really essential as, 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 an, as an industry, um, and a particular industry that's so sort of technologically focused, we're using new tools all the time um, to just be aware of what's going on and to make sure that we're using those tools in the most uh, f effective and efficient way to, to tell stories for our clients. Yeah, I love it. Being amongst that, amongst that energy, must be uh, must, must be must be great for sure. And actually, um, this is uh, what you've said is like reason why it's absolutely great to have um casual as um as the podcast first sponsor um yeah it's been a very been planned. a bit of it in the planning and uh but yeah uh, yeah it's great that you guys are on board and um yeah looking forward to um no you know, getting you guys involved obviously this is not your first time on the pod as well so um but for those people who um who uh are not so initiated tell us a bit about yourself and, and the company Sure. So uh, I co-founded the company back in 2006. Uh, we did a series of video diaries for Expedia, the travel website uh, of a journey from London to Mongolia in an old mini. And we used camcorders and laptops uh, and we're uploading the videos that we were editing as we were going um, onto the uh, Expedia website, who was the client who, who paid us to do this. Um, and it was before people really, anyone had heard of YouTube, it was before people thought of the internet as a medium for video. But what we realized that we kind of happened on there was that we were using the latest technology uh, to create content, to tell stories for a global business in a way that like, it hadn't really been done before. There was obviously, there's always there's been a uh, industrial and corporate production for over a hundred years. Um, but the traditional methods just were far too heavy to create content for this massive potential medium that was the internet. Uh, and so the company's really grown from there. We were uh, fortunate enough to have our, some of our work recognized by a number of um, recruitment marketing awards, uh, which then really helped us to sort of develop a bit of a specialism in recruitment marketing and employee communications, which then meant when we expanded to the US and New York in 2011, um, we had a very clear niche that we were able to uh, focus on, which then really helped to establish a bridgehead, which we've net since expanded. Uh, and we're now uh, London, New York, LA. I'm in San Francisco. Uh, we've got an office in Chicago, Barcelona, uh, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, and we recently acquired a business in Hong Kong. So we've got this like, real global workflow um, and we're able to be a global producer for our global clients, um, producing work wherever wherever they need 
Um, and I think some of the trends we're going to talk about in a minute, um, you know, we're able to draw on those to uh, really have a 24 hour workflow. So for instance, we could sell a job in London, we could produce it from New York, we could do the post production in Australia, and deliver it at 9am the next morning, without anyone having worked a minute of overtime. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's kind of an outcome of, of this sort of future focusing of the company and just really trying to think about like, how can we use these evolutions that are happening in our world to, uh, to provide a better service for our clients? Lovely. Well, I, I remember the beginning of the last decade be meeting you guys and uh, yeah, see, seeing you win those, uh, you know, those awards. So it's, it's great to see, God, how much has happened since then. And uh, you guys are going, going absolutely fantastically. It's um, so, okay. So the future, you know, it's, it's like been a journey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, you're constantly looking <laughs> ahead, which is great, you know, and, but when, you know, at the moment, you know, there, you might have seen the news, everyone might have seen as well. Economies are struggling. You know, we've had our, had our autumn, you know, budget statement thing today in the UK, um, in the House of Commons mm. and um, inflation's high, interest rates high, you know, it's, it's not looking great. So what, you know, what, when economies are struggling and, and times are unpredictable, why focus on the future? A, a really interesting question. I think, um, you know, all these things are cyclical and as, tele as, as challenging as a downturn turn can be, uh, you know, we, I think we have to stay op optimistic and, and, and focused on good times returning. Uh, the only way that the good times are going to return is by people really focusing on, on business as, as the engine that, that really pays for all of the things that we enjoy in society, whether that's uh, the health service or, or just the holidays that we go on. Um, and so continuing to focus on, um, on the, the ways we can evolve our businesses, um, to continue to provide a great service for our clients is, is really, it's, it's, it's an essential step in pulling us through any challenging downturn. I think, you know, to, to think about the role of content in that, you know, in any time of uncertainty, people look to, uh, the uh, to to bodies in their lives, whether you know whether that's the government or that's their employer or uh, suppliers or even just companies that they they feel like they have a, a sort of a, a brand relationship with, and they look for they look for security and they look for understanding, and video content is the most powerful tool for building a uh, a, an, a, a building empathy with your audience. And so if you can demonstrate that you understand their plight, if you can demonstrate that you can understand you, that, uh, that you understand them, um, then, you know, video is, is, is the, the most effective way of doing that. Uh, so, so that's why it remains, it, it still has a role, you know, no matter how challenging the backdrop might be, um, you know, and that's not, I think a lot of people think that video has to be uh, really expensive. Uh, you know, and to do anything effective, you know, you have to spend a lot of money on it. And that's just, it's uh, just simply not, not accurate. I think you do in the modern world, um, and given some of the trends that we're going to talk about in a second, you do have to be creating content you've really thought about with really good narratives that really resonate for your audience. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily easy, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Well, it's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's you know, Often, like kind of, there's that kind of, I suppose, fight or flight approach, you know, option in that fork in the road where it's like, okay, if times are tough, you know, businesses will just, okay, well, maybe let's just batten down the hatches and try and ride through this. And there's other businesses that go, well, actually, you know, to be able to ride through this, <laughs> you know, we need to, we need to do something about it. As a, oh, God, I'm going to say a Winston Churchill quote, quote now, isn't it? What do you say? If you're going, if you're, if you're going through hell keep going you know it's you know so so there's that thing about movement yeah. and momentum um which is i think abs absolutely Completely. absolutely right um, yeah thomas friedman uh who's a journalist for the new york times and he's done a fair bit of uh, writing uh he's an author uh, he wrote a book called thank you for being late that was all about the incredible disruption that technology's brought into our lives 
And it's largely about how now that we're so dependent on um, digital platforms that we, effectively all evolution in the world has kind of been plugged into Moore's law, which was this idea proposed by one of the founders of, of Intel that the processing power on any chip doubles every two years. Uh, I think it's gone to four years now, but like that, what that creates is absolute exponential growth, exponential change. And he said that's one of the reasons why the world's gone so crazy recently, because the amount of change that's happening is so rapid. But he talked about how uh, he, was, he quoted a, uh, an Olympic uh, canoeist who said that when, whenever you get a beginner who starts going down white water rapids, their natural inclination is to put the oar in the water and try and slow themselves down because they, you sort of freak out and go, gosh, you know, how can I slow myself down? Whereas actually what you should do is accelerate. And if you, if you canoe faster than the water's flowing, then actually that's how you maintain stability. And so, you know, whether it is, you know, the, 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 the populism that we've seen over the last, last sort of six years or so in the Western world, that, that is largely a result of people going, whoa, 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 this change is too rapid. I'm going to shove my oar in the water and try and kind of like go back to like this sort of previous golden age, you know, when times were better the sort of the fallacy of that. And, and what that does is it effectively capsizes the economy or, or it maybe doesn't capsize the economy, but it's had a negative effect on the economy. It's had a negative effect on our institutions and the establishment. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it's, it's important that we, that we embrace change, you know, and like, you, you know, of course, yes, you can batten down the hatches, but like the only way that we as a sort of Western society and Western market, draw ourselves through these challenging times is by finding that growth and i appreciate growth uh, you know is it, it has become a bit of a politically charged issue but i think for you know if just we just bring it back to like the company level you know it's it's our responsibility to safeguard the jobs of the people who we you know who, who are working for us and so the key then is like well okay what's the best route to doing that and just turning off all your sales and marketing is just that's not going to save you um, you know, in a way you sort of need to double down on that, you know, you need to look at it like smartly, of course, you know, don't like, you need, absolutely don't waste, don't waste your resources, but also, you know, just kind of squirrel, squirreling them away is, is not the recipe for, um, for, for putting us through any current challenge. Yeah, definitely. There's a, so you, I think this will be my final quote from a famous person today, I think, but it, um, Henry Ford, I think I put something out on LinkedIn last week, which is, you know, so it's spending, uh, saving, saving money by, I probably won't get this exactly right, but saving money by um, spending less on advertising is, is like um, stopping a watch to save time. You know, so it's, yeah, totally, totally can, yeah. totally can to intuit, totally can to intuitive. I, think. I get it. Like, I understand, you know, I understand why there's a natural desire to do it you know you when you're when you you're concerned about a potential downturn in your in your in your revenue and then you look at all the light you know you look at your like the, where all the, the money in the business is going and you've got you you got your staff like you know it's a big chunk but then you look at marketing and you're like well that's that's a pretty big bit isn't it like you know and it's a pretty easy thing to turn off as well so you can just go oh, well let's just half that and of course you can do it and you can save that money. But like the whole point of marketing, if you have it set up properly, is you're investing in future, you're, you're buying future clients. And so you, it just, you create a bit of a downward spiral. Anyway, anyway. you know, it, it takes a degree of nerve to, to keep, to keep investing in it, but, but it's not, it's, you know, in a, in a sense, you should be doubling down on your marketing because if, if, if it's, if it's, if the effectiveness is dropping, then you need to do more of it. Not less. And, you know, there's you know, anyway. consumers become more discerning in terms of like, you know, being being mm. careful with where they spend their money. When they do spend their money, they're wanting to make sure that that is, you know, is worth that time of spending money when they do that less. And when it comes to the job market, you know, mm. it's 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 about making sure that you're kind of going back to that thing about authority and trust that actually you are making the right choice. So that all points towards you know everything mm -hmm. everything you, you've been saying. But so like kind of obviously you're talking about you know, changing times, challenging economies and, you know, the pace of change. We talk about content production. Mm -hmm. You know what? 
why why does content production itself need to change? Because you know, people some people say, well, you know, there are tried and tested approaches, and you know, it's been done for years, so we should stick to it. Yeah. What what needs to change? Well, I think if you if you step back and you look at creative production more generally, I mean, going all the way back to uh, looking at like what drives change in the creative industries. It's like it's a it, creativity has always been, or, or, or the creative industries and, and art has always been about the interplay between the latest in technologies. So technological advancements happen, and then creative people take those advancements and use them in new and interesting ways. So you know whether that is um, you know spitting ochre onto a handprint in a cave took twenty five thousand years ago, or it's the printing press, or it's celluloid film or it's, uh, you know, a, a current iPhone and, and all the things that they can do, a cell phone and all the things they can do. You know, the, the, the entire history of uh, the production of creative products has been driven by this continual change in technology. You can't stop technology changing. And therefore, like, it's, it's our role as an industry to continually look at these new technological tools. This is not a new thing. Admittedly, you know, to draw on that, the, the Moore's law example, it's something that's potentially accelerating, but like, but it, but it's not new. And so it's our responsibility if we want to stay relevant, if we want to stay new, um, that we, we look at like, you know, all the different ways that people are using the tools that we have available and make sure that we stay ahead of it. It's a really interesting time to be, to work in creative production, because, simply because uh, there is so much change and there are so many new tools and those tools are so powerful, you know, so whether it's, uh, you know, all the things like the, the, you know, the metaverse and 360 video, VR, interactive AR, um, and then, you know, right, right through to just all the different platforms that there are available, you know, there's so many media to be putting out, um, your, your content on. It's like, this is such an exciting and interesting time to be doing what we're doing. Um, but, you know, if we want to stay relevant, like we just, we have to stay aware of, of all the changes that are happening. I think it, you, know, it, you, you can quite often feel like uh, this change is like, it's, it, it's of course, it's, it's inexorable, but it can feel like it's happening very rapidly. But actually, if you, if you concentrate and you, you know, you keep one eye on it, it's not changing anything like as fast as you think it might be. It's only when you ignore it that you potentially, you know, run the risk of, of being a of being a blockbuster, um, and so you know by keeping one eye on all these new technologies, so we can kind of stay like relevant for for, for the future, and make sure you know as a as a company that's supplying a broad base of clients around the world, make sure that what we're supplying is is absolutely as on point for them as it can possibly be. Well, the, uh, the technology itself is made making workflows a lot different. You know, a lot more. <laughs> A lot more twenty four seven going back to what you were saying at the beginning, you know. So that's like that's that's fantastic. Mm. People are not not having to work any any kind of anything like overtime, but there's still the, the workflow backed up by technology means that actually that's that's something that's a lot easier to do these days than than, than, it, than it was. Um, mm. What what is it about? So the I mean, look, pandemic kind of feels like a feels like a long time ago, but it wasn't at all, you know, and it's a bit surreal to think about the pandemic and think what we all went through, but you know, but what was it about the pandemic or how, how was the pandemic changed content production in, in your view? So the history of, of video production and, and, and corporate corporate industrial production is about change, but there are, there are different themes that evolve. So, you know, crews have got smaller, barriers to entry have got lower, uh, turnaround times have got faster. And, they, and that, that's really been an evolution that's run for about a hundred years, from about the 1920s, late 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 19 teens to 1920s, through to about 2020. And then what happens in 2020 is uh, two key things. Firstly, there's a real there's the evolution in technology. So we have cloud computing which then allows us to do those 24 hour workflows. So we can, you know, there's, there's platforms now where you can be shooting and as you shoot the material, it's uploaded to the cloud. And so you can have an editor on the other side of the planet 
instantaneously editing, right? So there's, there's technologies like that. There's also obviously Zoom and Slack, which just make kind of working in a dispersed way so much easier. But then there's also, and I think this is probably more significant because that technology was, was around. The more significant change is just a psychological one. And that is that we, uh, the, the, we now think it's perfectly fine to manage a business which, you know, where you never go into the office. You know, people like, you know, we were talking to someone the other day, they were complaining about a three-day work week, you know, and having to go into the office for three days, you know. And so, like, that's such a fundamental change. And so, you know, for us, historically, you know, we, we'd have clients who really wanted to come in and, you know, sit in on an, on an edit and be able to feed back in real time to the to the editor. You know, now, like, people are far more willing to just, be able to, to monitor that independently. And so in a way, you know, if you're not going to be sitting next to someone you, and, you, and you have this um, technology that allow you to be sitting anywhere in the world, you know, so, you know, why, why have you, all of your producers based in one single city? Why not spread them out? You know, why, like, it, why, you know, why not manage capacity around the world? You know, so you can, you can draw, you know, even if you're just producing something in London, you, could, you can still be drawing on, animation talent from so you know from somewhere else so you you know you're, you're getting you're getting cost efficiencies you're getting creative efficiencies and I, and so there's there's a sort of covid really marks a line in the sand in terms of production which we're really not going to go back over um, and it's because of those two changes the technological and the, and the psychological well that's and also to to be able to draw upon that global talent more you know stuff that you wouldn't really get unless maybe you're in a you know, classically, it's you in a in a major capital city, and that in itself is a melting pot of cultures and talents, and therefore businesses mm. have more chance of having those kind of people working in those businesses. But this this like times that by God knows how much, because literally, you are you've got people from different sides, different parts of the world, with different backgrounds, different experiences, and that in itself just fuels that creativity, mm. that then forces those completely forces those trends to <laughs> to happen as well and that must be that's uh was well, it, it um yeah it's, it's yeah it's extremely kind of liberating and also just um gives the business a lot more perspective doesn't it it does and that, but you know look that's not that's not to say that like all the clients necessarily need to be aware of that you know like i think as a production company we can offer like there's a there's a facade like, you know how we do it behind the scenes doesn't really matter like they're still working with a producer who's based in their city, um, you know, it, it, it's it's just it's it's the infrastructure that is laid behind them, um, and and how you, and, and, you know, and how, like how that enables them to just create something that's like, you know, if if it does need to be location specific, then you know, how are you creating something that's culturally relevant for that local city? So you know, if you're shooting, if you're producing something in in Tokyo for for a, a Japanese market. You know, how do you make sure that that is like that resonates for them? So you have to work with people locally. But then similarly, you know, if, if you're just creating something for a global brand and, you know, and it, and it wants to be kind of like London or, or, or US based or European or US based, you know, like you know, how are you making sure that, the, that 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 producer is able to pull together all the different parts, you know, and leverage like a potential whole world of production? as opposed to just the people that you're able to find locally. So let's get on talking about more specifically about um, some particular trends. So at the moment, kind of what is, I suppose, what do you see as being the largest current trend right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the most significant trend is just the absolute explosion in content. And we talked about content proliferation. Um, and so according to Adobe, in the last two years, 165 million people have joined the global creative economy. And so that's people who've either taken photos or created film or uh, done creative writing and then uploaded that onto a social media channel. Um, and all of those people are competing with you for your audience's attention. And so that poses a real challenge, which is then compounded by the fact that all of that content is being uploaded onto sites uh, and, and platforms which have algorithms that are designed to serve your audience exactly the type of content that they want to see when they want to see it because they're trying to like really juice the uh, 
the uh, stickiness of their platform. And so that just the combination of just volume, but then also just like this incredible focusing of that volume on your audience means that it's really, really hard to get your message through. And then that's compounded by the fact that uh, those, your audience is going home every night and watching billions and billions of pounds, dollars being spent on uh, the quality of their streaming content. So whether it's Netflix or uh, Apple TV or, um, or Amazon, you know, they're spending uh, you know, de defense budget level spending on um, on content, uh, and that just means that the quality of the the, the storytelling of just the, the the production value is just insane. And so, as a content producer, and I don't you know I don't mean this to sound um, overly negative, but like the, the the backdrop is one of just intense noise, um, and I think that that poses you know that that was probably the most significant current trend um that we have to navigate as as communicators um you know now does that necessarily mean that you need to be creating kind of the type of content you might see on tiktok um potentially does it mean that like everything you produce needs to have the same production value as as a kind of lord of the rings um, I would probably argue no, like it, it really doesn't. But what, what it does mean is you need to do, you need to put the work in to understanding like where, where are the stories, where are the narratives that are associated to your purpose as a business that you can tell really compellingly. Um, you know, it's, it's, it used to be, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was okay to just create a video for your website, you know, and like everyone got like, they got their video, they put it on the website and that was enough. And it was and it was fine and like that is just not that's just not where we're at anymore um so i'd say that's probably the most significant trend you're right in so the current it's, environment because it's it, it's the comp your competitors aren't your competitors is it that's the thing that that really earning earning attention and well, mm. the attention economy and all that you know is 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 it's just fantastically important just to not be slinging product i say it here all, you know all the time but this thing about not just you know slinging product and actually trying to trying to create content that actually is going to add some sort of value to people's day-to-day -day and that value not being well i bought the product or i've applied for a job <laughs> that's the tick yeah that's the value that's been given to me um it is your yeah, hyper 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 completely value, isn't it the power of content to build brand equity and brand value is has never been greater, you know. So, like, yes, there is this incredibly noisy backdrop, but the potential that you have to to build value in your clients' eyes, you know, whether whether that is uh, the potential value of you as a as an employer or uh, as a, or as a supplier, um, you you can use content in in interesting ways to 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 build build brand value. Um, and so uh, I may have talked about this before, but there was an uh, economist, an Austrian economist in the late 19th century called Ludwig von Mises. And he talked about the perception, how uh, your, your customer can't split the value that is added by the utility of your product from the value that's the perceived value that's added by your marketing. Because there's like, there's no... They can't say, oh, well, you know, that's the value that I get from it being, you know, I don't know, a, a jar of a jam. And that's the value I get from it being your jar of jam. And so the example that he used is that if you are in a very expensive restaurant and the food's wonderful, the music's lovely, the atmosphere is great, but the whole place smells of sewage because the toilets are backed up like that will destroy your experience and that and and that and so that's that's the sort of that's the separation between like the utility and then the brand value so the brand value is or the perceived value is is that smell of effluent and so um and and so that's what you're that's what you're trying to do when you're sort of positioning your product and you're using content to to, to build that brand equity is you want to be creating content that 
your audience loves and they love you for having created it and that then you're able to leverage that 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 incredible brand value that you can build into demand and then through that demand you can then you know that's how you can really monetize it whether that you know is uh, recruiting like better better employees and, and really pr- improving their perceived value of, of you as an employer or whether it's with um, you know your customers and, and, and then buying products from you well, that's great thanks very much nick really appreciate it um but you'll be back soon um we'll be talking uh, specifically about uh, particular trends and also talking about examples you know off the back of those trends so uh, okay. yeah, absolutely thank you very much really appreciate your time and, um, yeah see you well, then cheers we'll see you in the next episode very shortly